Who is the loved one? Allah. Who is Ar Rahman? Allah. Who is Al Manan? La ilaha illa Allah. Muhammad al Rasul Allah. Muhammad is the messenger. To Allah is our return. La ilaha illa Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنتدي لولا أن دان الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد نبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين. I seek refuge in Almighty Allah against Satan they are caused and I begin the name of Almighty Allah the most beneficent the most merciful. I bear witness that nobody deserves any form of worship except Almighty Allah our Creator our Nourisher and our Sustainer. May his peace and blessings be with the leader of mankind, the last prophet of him, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his companions, and all those who follow this right path. Amen. May the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be on all the viewers as well. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you are welcome to yet another edition of our program, Islam in Focus. This is the platform provided by the Muslim Media World Group of Nigeria for you to know more about the teachings and practices of Islam. Today, I have a very eminent guest in the studio who is going to discuss a very important topic which I have chosen, and that is making Nigeria work for its citizens in line with Islamic principles. My guest today, is an academic par excellence, that's Professor Abdul Kabir Hussein Saleh of the Kwara State University, Malite. He is the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, Management and Social Sciences. Prof, you are most welcome to this program. Thank you for having me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa wa barakatuh. I need not tell you that Professor Abdul Kabir Hussein Saleh has featured on this program before. And I need to tell you as well that in its youthful days, when he was in the secondary school, he was a regular partaker in Quran memorization competition. And he excelled throughout the period I'm talking of the uh, early 90s up to 1994 so now prof has traveled out to acquire more knowledge having passed through a number of institutions across the world i'm very sure he was in saudi arabia for some time later in malaysia in malaysia i spent up to 20 years there and he was also in egypt with the topic we have chosen we need somebody with a very vast experience in terms of a way of life in line with the knowledge he has acquired. Professor Abdul Kabir Hussein Saleh is a professor of Islamic studies. We now raise the question that how could Nigeria work for its citizens in line with the Islamic principles, seeing what we have been facing since the beginning of our various republics, especially from 1999 to date, we have not found our feet. Successive government have been failing the nation, and people are not realizing the objectives and the aims for which they are voting people into power. So that's why we have chosen that topic. And my cutting razor in the program today, Prof, will be that. Uh, with your uh, vast knowledge, as well as a varied experience in terms of visiting countries and living in some countries apart from Nigeria. I've mentioned Saudi Arabia. I talked about Malaysia and Egypt. What have you seen in their governance that has made them to excel in governance? 
to the extent that people of those countries knew that they have government and they know that they have government and it's working for them. Thank you. Uh, thank you for asking this uh, uh, interesting and appropriate question. Alhamdulillah, um, I managed to visit a number of countries mm. uh, as uh, we are asked in Islam that uh, Almighty Allah created the world. Mm. Not only your country of birth, but he created many parts of the world, all parts of the world indeed. So you are to visit here and there in order to compare the experience, uh, to know that the, if these people can make it great in their country, why don't you make it great in your own country? Sure. So based on my little experience here and there, I realized that uh, people over there are people-oriented leadership. No. The political leadership hmm. that uh, was champion in these countries are uh, related to serve the citizens, hmm. not the citizens of the world, primarily the citizen of the country. Hmm. So every policy enacted hmm. should be meant to serve the citizens, whether it is in Egypt, whether it is Saudi Arabia, or in Malaysia, mm. leaders are to serve their citizens. So it is not to serve the citizens uh, of uh, other parts of the world, mm. but their own citizens. And also, they make sure that um, they have a functioning system, mm. a functioning system whereby. Uh, even if you are a crazy leader, mm. you will be guided. Mm. You cannot go astray because you will be guided by a particular standard. Mm. You see, Trump, he came with all this mentality. Mm. He didn't, America didn't suffer that much mm. because he was guided by establishment, political establishment. Mm. So there must be a standard. Whoever comes in or goes out, standard must remain constant. But if uh, the standard uh, comes together with individuals, mm. uh, it's not stable, mm. then we have nowhere to go. Mm. Uh, so that in case, case people mm. who rule with their uh, aims and caprices, yes, 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 with their own in. In genuine intent with their own personal intention, personal intention and personal interest. People will not realize, will not realize because we do the benefit have, of governance. Exactly. Okay. We do not have a communal, mm. a shared interest. Mm. But once we have a shared interest, mm -hmm. which party, whether it is APC, PDP, Labour, mm. this party must serve this common shared interest. Okay. But when do you, we do not, we do not have a clear. Uh, common interest, mm. anyone who comes will form his own interest. Okay. Within four years and, uh, or eight years. Thank you very much. Mm. Can you tell me all the things that are working in the socio economic environment of these Islamic countries? The institutions, first and foremost, that uh, are working. Uh, first and foremost, is there is a system that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. The system is functioning. Well, okay. System is when I said system, I do not mean a political system alone. Mm. I mean the system, political system, economic system, uh, security system, mm. and so social system, historical system. So system is functioning, fully functioning. If system is functioning, everybody we know, nobody, not everybody will go into politics. Mm. So if I am academic, I know that I need to attend to my duties on time. Physicians knows what to attend and how to attend it to, to, to the patients on time. So there is a functioning system. Uh, secondly, um, democracy uh, pride itself that um, you know uh, it, it generates and it promises dividends. Mm. Uh, this dividend is not one man dividend. Everybody share the dividends of de democracy. Mm. Everybody share it. So if um, the system is working and we have a dividends of good leadership, 
the leader will share the dividends of uh, good leadership, good governance. The children of the leader, of the political leader, will share it. Great children uh, of uh, political leaders will share it. Mm. Everybody in the society will share it. Mm. And everybody, because they are sharing these dividends of uh, good leadership, they will be prepared to give their own out in order to serve the country, in order to serve the common interest. Because I know whatsoever you, whether it's this party or the other party, mm. you are serving my own interest. Mm -hmm. I mean, my country's interest. Mm. So uh, people come and go, but the establishment, uh, the establishment must remain. remain. Okay. Now, let, let's go to the issue. One of the drawbacks of administration in Nigeria is the uh, reward right. for political office holders serving either in the legislature or in the executive. People have criticized the, 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 the reward system in the sense that uh, federal legislature, uh, legislature, that is the Senate and the House of Representatives, whether you talk of the personal emolument or the allowances all accumulating into millions and is earned every month by the senators and members of the House of Rep. Ditto for members of the State House of Assembly that are giving certain benefit to the extent that if you now look at the whole system, you discover that our money, our at our money is going to the pockets of the politicians while the balance is going for services that is infrastructural facilities the quantum of the amount going to individuals in the political system in nigeria have you not considered it that is too much at variance with those countries where the systems are working yeah definitely um, it is true that um, you know, Islam allows that uh, whoever does righteously mm. should be awarded mm. and rewarded accordingly, but not at the expense of others. It, is not, it shouldn't be at the expense of others. So political leaders, mm. yes, they are the leaders. Mm. They deserve some reward, but the followers equally deserve the reward. Uh, without the followers, the leadership is nothing. So it is, um, as I said earlier, we need to have a shared interest that this accumulative wealth of the country shouldn't be a monopoly of uh, to the political uh, office holders alone, but it should be shared among the common people. Uh, I remember sometime in, in uh, 97, 98, mm. the economic crisis in Malaysia, mm. when the, the country faced a serious economic crisis. Mm. The Prime Minister uh, and the East government, Dr. Mahadir Mohammed, former Prime Minister of, uh, of Malaysia, mm. uh, said that uh, every political officer must reduce the salary. Mm -hmm. So before he asked the, uh, the academics or uh, physicians to reduce their salary, they cut their salary, the salary of the politician first and foremost. Uh, probably 25% mm -hmm. cut their salary, uh, some of them 10%, some of them 35%. So in that way... To rebuild the economy. In order to rebuild the economy. In order to rebuild the economy and to infuse the confidence in, 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 in people's hearts that we are working for you. We are working for you. We are not working for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are servant leaders. Mm. We are to serve you, mm. not to serve our own interests. Interest. So this one we work because mm. actions speak louder than words. If you are working like that, that you are serving the people's interest, not necessarily your selfish interest alone, people will work for you. Okay, now that you are planning to have a new president in Nigeria, Will it be a better idea that when he gets there, he makes a proposal in which uh, there will be a drastic cut in the earnings of the politicians, both those in the executive and the legislature, because it has been practiced in some other countries before 
in order to rebuild the economy or because of the fact that the nation has observed that people now troop into politics because of the financial gains there that if we uh, de-emphasize money in politics we will get a better governance what do you see to that yeah that should be very good if we the government decides to cut the the payments for the governance mm. uh, it's, it's too expensive in nigeria mm -hmm. it's too expensive in nigeria uh, but uh, who are the one who who are the leaders to cut this salary they mm. are the political leaders uh, and they are the beneficiaries they are the beneficiaries so the problem here is whether they will be willing to take this drastic action once they get to the office is a different question but that would be very good if they, we can cost the we can reduce the cost of uh, leadership in nigeria um we, we don't have much uh, we, instead of uh, letting one person accumulating the wealth of uh, generations uh, you, to, to accumulate the wealth of his generation and generations even to come why don't we reduce the cost of uh, governance in the country i think that would be to the benefit especially the pay packages of the political office holders what is the point you just imagine uh when we are paying for the security mm. i have security votes these are millions of uh, naira uh, i pay the security votes i pay it for my bodyguard mm. i pay it for yahoo boy or you know gangs here and there but imagine if these people get their own salary in a more legitimate way. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get this voting anymore. Mm -hmm. Probably I get a few thousands, mm -hmm. and this few thousand I will, I will use it for my upkeeping. In other words, you are because calling for the uh, abolishment of security vote for those in governance. The, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because we will have, by that time, we have taken care of the jobless people. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to be worried of the security anymore. But if we want my security, my security, you get the money, and that even money cannot buy you security at the end of the day. And they don't spend up to 20% for the it. security. They cannot send it. The balance of it goes to them. It goes to them. And they are not secure at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that's why every time they need to travel abroad in order to be secured. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Can we now go to other areas? Because when we started this program, you were telling us about the system to work for the masses. And I don't see where the system will work for the masses, where we have laws that protect corruption. That is, if people are involved in corruption, our laws protect them. I'll give you two examples. All economic crimes in Nigeria today, no matter how high the amount of money that have been embezzled or stolen or looted, those that have been tried could still be bailed in the court of law. Until the case finishes, they are, they are, the offenses are billable. Mm -hmm. That is our law for you in Nigeria. The same law provides for anybody who steals certain amount of money and is being prosecuted there is provision for plea bargaining, whereby somebody who's been charged for stealing 100 million, right. if he's able to return 45 million, the prosecuting agencies like ICPC or EFCC right. will just withdraw from the case and collect that 45 million. Mm -hmm. That is Nigeria of today for you. What have you to say on that? Are you not thinking that the reason why we have not been getting the dividend of democracy is that there are no stringent laws punishing looting in Nigeria? Don't you think that way? Yeah, that is true. Uh, laws for the progress of uh, any country, mm. the law must be supreme. Mm. It must be above the people who make it. But if uh, you make law uh, to be selective in order to punish uh, some and to let others go 
uh, uncharged, then that, that will not work. That will not work at all. Uh, it, it, we need a kind of a discipline that if I do this, I will get this. You see, uh, mm. we are told in the Quran, mm. and he will get it. No matter how small the good is, you will get it. If you do otherwise, you do the bad things, you will get it. And God will give it to you. Woman has mm. Haditha. Now, if you make a promise, mm. we must keep that promise. We must uh, we must walk the talk, not just keep talking, talking, talking without without implementing our talk. So, if you embezzle some amount, some amount of money, and people see that you 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 are punished for that, people will take lesson. Before you do similar things, you have to think twice whether you are ready to go to jail for this number of years. If you are ready, then that is your path. It means you will enjoy the rest of your life in the prison. Uh, but uh. if um, you, it's a kind of opportunity, I get the opportunity and embezzle, I leave. So that that it doesn't is not enduring system. Thank you very much. In other words, you are calling for. Evolving uh, that we should evolve mm -hmm. a new political mm -hmm. and legal order yes. that will restore sanity in the Nigerian society. Yes. I think it's better for us because all that we have been doing in the past has been that we are changing the person, the persons who are holding office, either as president mm -hmm. or as governors, as the speaker of the legislature or the president of the senate we are just changing the personalities yes, yes. but the life of people recycling. have not been changing we, are recycling everything. we just recycle our leaders whereas the provision for them to work with need to be amended to yes. get the type of result we need exactly thank you very much our viewers from wherever you have been watching this program today uh, we have discussed the topic of uh, making Nigeria to work for the masses in line with the Islamic principles. Our guest today, Professor Abdul Kabir Hussein Saleh from the Kwa State University, has told us that in other climes, such as Islamic countries, offenses are punished seriously especially economic offenses he has lived in saudi arabia malaysia as well as in egypt their laws are so stringent and doesn't allow for economic crime in our society there are a lot of economic crimes that are taken to court and the, the corporates are usually fined or asked to return part of the money stolen instead of being sent to jail. We are aware that in, non, in some non-Islamic countries like China, they kill people for looting the treasury. What are we waiting for? So any political leadership that fail to amend the legal system upon which the nation is ruled, we can never get to where we are going. People who are stealing the ad earned money of the masses, getting to political office to amass wealth, they will continue to do so because the law permits them to do it. Imagine people stealing billions and you take them to court. In the end, out of 100 billion, he returns 30 or 40. The balance becomes his own and is freed under plea bargaining. If he's working in other countries, Western countries, I would say, it cannot work in Africa and it cannot work in Nigeria. We better, we better look into this and ensure that when we elect leaders, we commit them to reform our laws so as to punish those who are committing economic crime and all other criminal activities relating to security. That is what my guest today has said, Professor Abdul Kabir Hussein Saleh, a professor of Islamic studies who has lived outside Nigeria for more than 30 years before returning back to the country. Presently, Prof is the dean 
of uh, Humanities, Management, and Social Sciences, Okwara State University, Maliti. Professor, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Jazakallah khaira. Barakallah fika. Insha'Allah. Together, myself and the professor will be saying bye-bye until when we meet next week, insha'Allah. But be before we sign out, let me inform you that we are on YouTube. So if you just Google Muslim Media Watch Group, you find us on the YouTube. And I'm happy to inform you that we are now on website. All you need to do is just type muslimmediawatch.com and you find our details there. You can reach us through the same uh, uh, social platform and you'll be able to get us and some of our productions will also be fine on the program. Until next week when we meet again, inshallah, myself and professor we are saying wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. is due to the one and only he is the master of all creation all praise is due to the one and only he is the master of all creation he is the sustain